think our genius will have his miracle fiber by the morning? Yes, I think I will. Thank you, sir. Nothing at all. Try my hat, too. Do I do I get the job, sir? Oh, yes, yes, you get the job. Since you're a member of the firm. I say you're looking very well, Mr. Spain. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. I suppose that knowing I was going to be released after 14 years did wonders for my appearance. Now, how about the additional information about my partner? Well, we traced Mr. Wilcox to, uh, well, from Manchester to a flat at 112 Haddon Court, London. Haddon Court. Yes, that was October 1945. He married a woman named May Stokes. May Stokes? Uh, she died four weeks after the wedding. Then he purchased a steamship ticket to the United States of America, December 28, 1945. Last seen on or about January the 12th, 1946. Mm -hmm. And I was able to obtain this photograph of him, sir. Will you be wanting me to go to America, sir? No, thank you. I shall go there myself. In that case, sir, I'd like to give you the name of uh, a very clever man. was traced to an address in Haddon Court, London. In January 1946, he sailed for this country. He probably changed his name by now. All you have to do is to find him. 
Mr. Spain, how do you know he's not dead? I don't know. I strongly suspect that he's not. Fourteen years. Yes. Anything else about Wilcox? He speaks with a strong Oxford accent. Well, what did he do? Uh, what sort of a business was he in? Textiles in 1945. He was uh, inventing a new formula for fibers. Fibers. When you find him, let me know his whereabouts, that's all. May I ask what this is all about? It's not a police matter, Mr. Gunn. If there's anything unusual, Mr. Spain, I'd like to know it now. I'm an attorney, Mr. Gunn. I've come a long way. I have uh, something for you. Oh, you probably need some money. I'll be in touch. Got the thing for you, madam. Yes, I do. Now, this just came from the sample maker. It is in the book ten minutes. Let me see. Oh, here it is. We call this Arrivederci. It means goodbye. In Italian. Well, that's nice over there. What's that? Peter, Peter Gunn. Gunn. Peter Gunn? <laughs> Excuse me. Pete. <laughs> Joe? Jack? How are you? For goodness <laughs> sake. Kate. How are you? It's been a dog day. A dog day. He looks wonderful. Just wonderful. Marvelous. Marvelous. What brings you here, Pete? Drapes. Uh, redecorating. Half price to you. Everything in the place. Doesn't he look wonderful? wonderful. You know, he's never changed once. Say, you've got some beautiful stuff great. here. Oh, that's our new line. Do you like it? Crazy about it. Hey, that's nice. That, uh, that blue. Blue? What, did I say something wrong? Oh, Pete, <laughs> not blue. Cloud. Cloud? Today, everything's descriptive. Sorry. When I was a boy, this was called green. Forest. Dark gray. Charcoal figures. Brown. Earth. Not pink. Pink. You know, we have to change this. Candy thing. strike. Can, Can I talk to you right fellas a minute? Can you talk to us? Pete, anything you want, anything you want. Either one of you recognize this fellow? He speaks with a British accent. He's in textiles. There's a million people in the textile fields, a hundred mills in a hundred different cities, thousands of wholesale houses. Ten thousands of retail outlets, you know, a million jobs. I mean, who is he? What does he do? Is he a loom man, a salesman, a timekeeper, a shipping clerk? You know what I mean? He's in fibers. Mm. Mm. Probably connected with a mill. A Britisher, probably tweeds. Yes, his own mill, but... Or somebody else. Well, he's been in the business 14 years. At least a partner. Oh, at least, at least. All right. Mills, management, tweeds. Where do we go from there? Mm. I got it. Sadie. Sadie, a men's clothing journal. No. Joe in the apparel building. Oh, uh, Joe, listen, you go to Georgia, national distributing. I got it. Yes. Sadie at the men's clothing journal. Well, that's what I said. She's got pictures of everybody in the business. Even us? Thanks, fellas. I'll see you around. A pleasure. A real pleasure. Listen, anything you want. Half price. price. You know, anything and you your want. convenience. Uh, you're looking wonderful. He okay, looks wonderful. Just wonderful. Doesn't he look wonderful? You look very wonderful. He looks wonderful. Oh, madam, this, this is the one I wanted to show you. We have this in this way of number 5709. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Thomas Blankenship, Blankenship Mills, Oldfield. That's upstate. Hmm. You know him? Yeah. I covered the banquet last year and I saw him there. Does he have an accent? Yeah, sort of English. So thick you could cut it with a knife. <laughs> Lady? Thank you. Same to you. I'm very pleased, Henry. Thanks, Mr. Blankenship. Now I have sign painters ready, but no name for the new fabric. Oh, yes, we must decide. I ask not to be disturbed. A gentleman from Men's Clothing Journal. All right, show him. Give me a name, something striking, but not affected. Mr. Blankenship? Yes. 
Sorry, I uh, didn't mean to intrude. Always time for the press. Last minute rush, you know, just before the textile show. What can I do for you, sir? Well, there's plenty of time. All we need is a name for our new fabric. Uh, let's go Mexican. How about Acapulco? Why not go British? Yes. How about Prince Philip? Or Piccadilly? What would you think of uh, Haddon Court? Bullseye. I like that. We'll call it Haddon Court. I like it very much. It fits. Yes, Haddon Court. That's good. Now, clear out, both of you. I'd like a quiet word with this gentleman. Uh, yes, sir. Who sent you? A lady from the men's clothing journal. Who are you? You're not a reporter. As a matter of fact, I'm not. What do you want? I'm not sure. But uh, we'll contact you, Mr. Blankenship. your boy, Mr. Spain. You did? Somebody took some shots at me, put some holes in my car. Oh. Oh, I am sorry. What's your business with this man? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to divulge. I told you, somebody took some shots at me. I dislike that. I double your fee, Mr. Gunn. So you found him? I did. He told me you were a clever man. Who is he? And where? I'm not at liberty to divulge. Oh, yeah. All right. You tell me, and I'll tell you. Wilcox's name is now Thomas Blankenship. He's president of the Blankenship Mills. They're in Oldfield, about 85 miles from here. Blankenship, did you say? I said, now you say. Oh, yes, of course. You're quite sure he's the man? Quite sure. Good. My business with him was perfectly simple. You see, I was unjustly accused and sentenced for killing him. But as I strongly suspected, he never died. Thanks to influential friends, I served only 14 years. You're an attorney, huh? I had to tell a little white lie, Mr. Gunn. Otherwise, you would never have attempted to find him for me. Where are you going? Don't be angry, Mr. Gunn. You see, it's perfectly all right. I've already paid for what I'm going to take. What's that? His life. Lieutenant Jacoby. Jacoby, you gotta pick up a guy. Who? Gregory Spade. What'd he do? He hasn't done anything yet. What's he gonna do? Murder. How do you know? He told me. He told you? He's on his way to Oldfield to kill a man by the name of Blankenship. Who's he? He's president of the Blankenship Mills. Okay, I'll put a call through to Oldfield. Spain's still in town somewhere, but he won't be for long. Wait a minute, start over. Spain hired me to find the man. I did. Now he's going to kill him. You know what that makes me? Finger man. Nasty. Yeah. Get a pencil. Gregory Spain. About 54, 6 foot 2, 180 pounds, silver gray hair. He was wearing a coat and hat, light gray. Okay, I'll put a man on it. Now, 
operator. Would you give me Thomas Blankenship? Blankenship Mills, Oldfield. Thank you. Hello, I'd like to talk to Mr. Blankenship, please. Well, you've got to find him. Where? Oh, the textile show, yes. Where's that? The Commodore Hotel, you, you mean here? Thanks. See this ad? It's dated September the 3rd, 1945. Caretaker wanted. Apply to Spain and Wilcox, Textiles Limited. See Mr. Wilcox. That's him. Blankenship. That's right. Two days after the ad, this happens. Explosion, fire. Some poor sucker answered the ad. Probably a dozen guys answered the ad, but Wilcox... Blankenship. Uh, ...hired the first guy that looked like himself to make it look as if Spain had started the fire and killed his own partner. Couldn't get away with that today. So... Goes to jail for killing a man that isn't even dead. Spain thinks the world owes him a murder. Anything on Spain? Not yet. Blankenship you checking up the Commodore yet? Not yet. Thanks. Pete, hey, when we do pick up Spain, what do we hold him on? I'll hold him on suspicion of what? Murder? Murder. Well, just the hold him. Can't do that forever. He gets out, finds Blankenship. I know, I know, but we can't do anything until after he kills the guy. Now, wait a minute. What? You can't do anything, even if he does kill the guy. What do you mean? Double jeopardy. Double... Yeah. Double jeopardy does work like that, doesn't it? No, wait, wait a minute. A man can't be tried twice for the same crime. That's right. Once he's acquitted, he can even brag about how he did it. But he wasn't acquitted. He was convicted. Oh, oh wait a minute. It sounds like, like Spain has a point, but you can't walk into a room and kill a guy. You just can't. He spent 14 years in prison for killing the guy. It was an erroneous determination, a miscarriage of justice. It's the same crime. Can he be tried twice, punished twice? Let me think. He didn't do it then. If he does it now... Jacoby, Spain is probably halfway to Oldfield by now. Why don't we do it the other way around? Contact Scotland Yards and have him pick up... Uh, Blank and ship for the murder of that caretaker in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. The man can't be convicted. No. Double and jeopardy. Hmm? Blank and ship just checked in at the Commodore. Oh, that's well. Come on. Hey, crisscross these seven. What? The man is sentenced to a pill. Oh, come on. No more photographs, gentlemen, please. Mr. Blankenship, you're under arrest, Mr. Wilcox. You're out of your mind. We'll know as soon as we hear from Scotland Yard. Suspicion of murder. You'd better come down now. Gregory Spain sent you here. You're a couple of assassins. Spain went to Oldfield to kill you. I am not that Oldfield. Don't move. I called Oldfield, they told me. You look mighty well up there for a dead man. Gregory, please. You frame me for your murder. Hello, oh, you, you'd be the stupid police. Why couldn't you come forward? I, I couldn't do that. Of course not. You talked me and my friends into investing in a miracle fiber. You spent the money, stole the formula, 
and left me to bear the brunt and failure of bankruptcy, and now murder as well. Gregory, please, I wronged you, I know that, but I've got plenty of money now. I'll, I'll make it all over to you. Fourteen years. Try it sometime. Mr. Spain. Stand still. Gentlemen, please don't do that. I presume you've heard of double jeopardy. You've got it all wrong, Spain. Double jeopardy doesn't apply here. What? He's right. It's a new and separate crime. Another time, another place. They'll hang you, Spain. I don't believe you. Stay there. We're not here to save his life, but yours. Oh, double jeopardy. <laughs> Don't move up there. I'm not sure that I shan't kill you all the same. Why not? You wrecked my life. Why not? Somebody call an ambulance. Should make an interesting trial. 